anyone who wants to create a high performance, secure and dependable software should learn Rust programming. Due to its efficiency, safety and expressiveness, it has quickly become the well liked among developers. Rust is a fantastic option for system development, but it also has a wide range of other uses. What are they? Let's find out. Hello everyone, I welcome you all in today's session about introduction to Rust programming. In today's session, let's catch up with some of the insights about Rust programming and know what are the fundamental concepts about Rust. But before we go ahead, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the EduRecals YouTube channel to never miss out on any updates from us. Also, if you're looking for any of the certification courses from EduRecal, do check out the link given in the description below. So guys, firstly, let's start off with some history about Rust programming. Graydon Ho, a Firefox employee, first came up with the idea and created Rust programming in 2006. Ho's dissatisfaction with C++ and his ambition to develop a language that combined low-level control with high safety features is the one called Rust. When Mozilla formally supported Rust project in 2009, it received a lot of momentum. In 2010, Rust.1 public release, also known as Rust.1, became accessible in public. It was an early version that demonstrated the fundamental ideas and concept of the language. The development of Rust from a side project to an established and widely utilized programming language may be seen in the language's history. With frequent updates and community-driven changes, it keeps improving to meet the demands of the programmers working on embedded system, web applications, and system programming, and many more. Next, let's talk about why to learn Rust. So programming in Rust is a worthwhile for a variety of reasons. Some of the most significant ones are listed below. Firstly, let's talk about in terms of performance. So Rust is appropriate for a system level programming, embedded systems and performance critical application. Since it is built to offer high performance and low level control equivalent to C or C++, Rust offers memory safety assurances without keeping compromising speed, making it a desirable choice for programmer wishing to streamline their code. Next, let's talk about memory safety. So Rust's ownership and borrowing system has enforced the rigid guidelines at compile time, removing typical problems like null pointer differences, buffer overflows, and data races. Rust is safer than many other languages because to this feature, which lowers the possibility of errors and security holes in your code. Then let's talk about cross-platform development. So Rust is a flexible language for creating cross-platform applications due to its emphasis on performance and system-level programming. Even embedded systems can successfully be compiled using Rust on a variety of target platforms including your Windows, Mac, Linux, and others. Next coming up is concurrency. So in terms of programming, concurrency is supported by the Rust because to its ownership model and small threads, which is known as the async task. As a result, writing secure and effective concurrent programming is made simpler, allowing you to take advantage of the modern hardware architectures. Last but not the least, carrier opportunity. So Rust has been steadily gaining popularity as more businesses use its crucial task. You may be able to work on interesting projects, contribute to open source software, and possibly set yourself apart from the competition by learning Rust. Then let's talk about some of the Rust concepts. So the management and access of memory in Rust is controlled with the core idea of ownership. So there are three major rules used to enforce ownership which is the ownership rule, borrowing rule, and the lifetime rule. So talking about ownership rule, every value in Rust has a variable that serves as its owners. Moving is the action of transferring ownership across variables. The former owner of the value cannot access it after it has been reallocated, eliminating the dual ownership and potential data races. Next is the borrowing rule. So Rust lets you borrow references to values rather than transferring ownership. Multiple variables can temporarily access a value without assuming ownership by borrowing it. So borrowing can be classified as either changeable, which is also known as mutable, or immutable. Strict compile time regulations are enforced by borrowing to stop data races and guarantee memory safety. Last is the lifetime rule. So Rust contains a concept called as a lifetime rule that specifies how long references are valid for. The usage of incorrect references is avoided via lifetimes which makes sure that the borrowed references do not outlive the values they point to. So guys, these were quite the basic fundamentals about Rust programming. I hope you liked this video and if you did, click the like button. And to stay notified for our further updates on EduRecal, do click the bell icon. And also if you have any clarification which is required to be answered, do hit the comment box. Like always, thank you for watching the video and wish you all happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. 
Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!